I'm Mike Farrington. Welcome back to the boardroom. In this video, I'm going to build a couple overarm dust collectors, one for each of my table saws. My original plan was to build one and then see how I like it, and then if I liked it, I was going to build another one. After building the first one, I realized that I really did like it right away, and I wanted to build a second one. The first one of these that I built was for my sliding table saw. I did this because functionality and ergonomics are far less important on a sliding table saw because all it really does is cut down plywood. My thought was I'd build this one first, learn what to do, what not to do, and then apply those lessons to the one that I was going to build to my traditional cabinet saw where ergonomics and adjustability is more important because a wider variety of cuts are made on that table saw. The first portion of this video is going to be me building the overarm collector for my sliding table saw. The second portion of the video, I'm going to show the changes that I made when building the second one, and I'll go over a couple of the lessons learned. To sum up what I'm doing here, I'm making some tubes out of half-inch Baltic birch. I'm using biscuits to make sure that everything is aligned nicely and parallel, and I'm using nails to hold everything together while the glue dries. And this last piece that I'm adding in has been cut short. This is actually the vertical member. And I cut this piece short to create a socket top and bottom for the other pieces to fit into. And this was an attempt to try and make those corner joints as strong as possible. I also added some diagonal bracing with some biscuits and glue. I did this to resist downward flex, or I guess you might call it drooping. This is what I look like when I'm wearing my thinking cap. I didn't quite know where I wanted everything to line up, so I intentionally made these arms too long with the idea that I would put them in place, take some real-world measurements, and cut them back as needed. I glued together a couple layers of plywood with a solid wood spacer to give me the right dimension, and this is going to plug up the end of the extension tube and give me a solid mounting point for the dust collection shroud itself. glued that guy in place and cleaned up the end. Okay, shifting gears here, I make another smaller tube. This tube is going to be what allows the dust collection shroud to ride up and down. And with the tube complete, I kind of eyeball the angle that it needs to be mounted at. And I use this information to go back and draw the shape of the shroud. And if you're wondering how I came up with this shape, I've been binge watching the show Stranger Things 3. And I think that the Mind Flayer monster has gotten into my psyche and is controlling my thoughts and actions. Once the Mind Flayer is happy with the shape that I've come up with, I use a combination of tracks on the bandsaw to cut it out. Once the shape's been cut out, I take a couple of minutes to marvel at my work and also confirm that it's going to work properly. I wanted to add a piece of steel to this part, and I needed to reduce this dimension by an eighth of an inch, which is the thickness of the steel. So this was the wacky solution I came up to ensure that these two cuts were parallel to each other. Next item on the agenda was to come up with a method to hold the shroud in place so it wouldn't slide down. 
and I thought a star knob would be a great way to do that. And I glued this assembly to the end of the extension tube. I just used a single screw as a clamp and I wanted to be able to remove it easily in case I had to cut this off to make an adjustment to it. I also added a piece of steel to the extension tube just as a clamping point. While working on the mock-up, I realized that it needed some more stability, so I added a foot to the bottom corner here. Next, I moved on to the plexiglass. I went with quarter inch thickness because I was concerned that eighth inch thickness might flex inward too much due to the vacuum of the dust collector. And in all of this, one thing that I learned was that band saws are absolutely awesome for cutting plexiglass. And an old beat up flush trim bit finished off the cut. And to attach the dust collection hose to the shroud itself, I had an old blast gate that had broken in half and I modified it as needed and drilled and screwed it in place. And then I used a hole saw of all things to cut the four inch diameter hole. After reassembling the shroud, I added a dab of blue Loctite because I really don't want any of these parts coming loose. Total amateur mistake right there, drilling a hole saw all the way through from just one side. I needed a way to hold the four inch dust collection hose in place and here's what I came up with. And the last task before glue up is to add another threaded insert and a bolt. I'll use this to adjust the arm level or at least parallel to the surface of the table saw. At this point, I was happy with the way that it looked, came together and functioned, so I decided to make it permanent and glue it up. And here's a quick look at her all glued up and standing tall. And a couple of screws to hold it in place and reconnect the dust collection hose. It's ready for use. I added this little piece of plexiglass here because the shroud has to be at a minimum height to clear the fence on the sliding carriage. So how does it work? Well, you'll have to wait till the end of the video for that. I will say this though, after using it for about two minutes, I realized I wanted to make a second one for this table saw right away. The first change for this build was I decided to cut slots for splines versus using the biscuit joiner, and I think this is faster. I also used three quarter inch thick plywood versus half inch plywood on the other one. I think three quarter is better. It is a little more rigid. I'm also using one eighth inch thick plywood for the splines.
And finally, I used clamps to clamp this together versus nails in the other one. I was concerned that if I tried to shoot a nail through the plywood, through the spline, into the next plywood, that I would have a blowout or two, and I just didn't want to deal with that. So I went with clamps. And the side braces I decided to just cut out of one piece of wood. That simplified construction a little. And I wanted to hollow out this middle section because that's where I'm going to run the 4-inch dust collection hose is going to go through there. I went with a butt joint and some biscuits on this one versus that sleeve setup that I had on the first version. This was faster, and I think after gluing on the side triangles, both joints were equally strong. On this one, rather than sitting on the ground, I was actually going to mount it to the mobile base of the table saw. So this was the mounting system I came up with, and you'll see more of that later. I went with two layers of three-quarter inch plywood this time around versus one. I did this because I make a much wider variety of cuts on my cabinet saw than I do on the sliding table saw, and I just wanted a wider area of coverage. After flush trimming the two parts together, I cut the plexiglass and drilled and installed it all the same way as last time. Here's a close-up of the mounting system I came up with. I'm just using self-tapping metal screws to go right into the mobile base. I kind of thought this was going to be a little sloppy and floppy, but it's actually rock solid. I was pretty happy with the way this turned out. And I drive a few screws into the outfeed table to hold it up top. And I redeem myself this go-around by drilling in from both sides for a nice clean cut. Now's as good a time as any for a song recommendation. During this build, I was listening to a band known as The Killers. In one of their songs, All These Things That I've Done is one of my very favorites. So, if you're in the mood, give it a whirl. One of the key differences between the two builds is that on the sliding table saw, the dust collection port is on the right side of the blade. On this one, it's on the left side of the blade. That's just a function of how the two saws are used. In this situation, though, I had to come up with a better mounting system that would allow the shroud to move up and down, in and out, and not bind. Overall, I'm happy with both builds. The ergonomics are good. They both function well. They slide in and out, up and down. Pretty darn easy. I think a little wax would help with that. And they don't feel too much in the way, I guess, any more than they need to be in the way to do their job. I think the one big takeaway is that using three quarter inch material is better. There is less flex. It feels more stable than this one that's made with half inch material. Although neither are bad. I guess there's a few final questions, the first of which is how do these work? And in a through cut, they work very good. In a skim cut, pretty darn good. I would say good enough. I'm happy with the dust collection performance. And as you can see here, I can cut a whole bunch of strips of plywood and I'm not coated in dust as I would have been before making these. The next question would be, why not buy these? There are plenty of great commercially available options, and the answer is, it looked like a fun challenge and a project that I wanted to tackle, and after building them, I'm happy to have done so. And the last question would be, what additional changes would I like to make? I think I'm going to add a holder for my clipboard so I can have my parts list right in front of me. Well, that's all for this one. Thank you for watching. Until next time.